Hi, welcome to Healthy Coaching, Nutrition Made Simple. It's Dr. Sherry here, and I want to take just a minute to tell you about one of my favorite food panels to run. This is called an IgG food panel. It's for 96 different foods. It differs greatly from an IgE food panel. An IgE food panel is the type of panel you might get when you go to your primary care doctor or your allergist and you're asking about any kind of food allergies or food reactions. They will run at what's called an IgE panel. And that is a good panel. It is um, about more of an immediate reaction. So the classic example of somebody who eats a peanut and cannot breathe and they are rushed to the ER. That's an immediate life-threatening type of reaction. Action. Um, and while that is good information, the IgG panel is completely different. The IgG panel is about a delayed food reaction. So these are more chronic, low-level health conditions like joint pain and depression, digestive issues. They're chronic, low level and they take a little while to develop. So you could eat a food on a Monday and Tuesday night or Wednesday you could experience the joint pain or the stomach issues or the depression. So it makes it very difficult to go back and think about what you may have eaten or done on that Monday that could be affecting your health. Now this panel is fairly controversial because it is not the be-all end-all, meaning that um, it is not a hundred percent. It is more information, which I think is great. We all need a little more information and I found it um, an invaluable component of my practice. But what I see most commonly is that when a food shows up as positive, and positive, when you're going to look at this panel with me today, positive is over a zero. Um, we consider that positive. So if you see a food that is positive, it is a reactive food for you. Um, if you see a food that's in the zero category, we can't say that it's 100% a safe food just because it doesn't show up here. There are so many different mechanisms of food sensitivities. Um, we can't completely rule out the problem with a food that's in a zero cate category. So you can see how it gives us a lot more information about reactive foods, but it's not 100%. And really, no food panel is 100%. You really have to do the experiential component of the diet. And the gold standard um, in this, this field for food sensitivities is a challenge and elimination type diet where you, know, you eliminate a food and then you challenge it to see how you feel. Um, so we're always going to compo combine a panel like this with an experiential component of challenging foods, eliminating foods, adding them back in, and, and that will vary depending on the person. But I wanted to show you this, this panel, um, and you can see this patient in particular has got some issues definitely with dairy. Dairy is a big deal here for her because it's well over a zero. Um, I want to mention also with this IgG food panel, unlike an IgE food panel, that immediate reaction, an IgG food panel we can heal from. So this is not a lifelong um, reaction. It's more about the body being um, overburdened by a food. It's about uh, the system not being able to handle the food. So once you work on the, the body itself and possibly eliminating these foods for a time period, um, most people can reintroduce these foods. So that can be, um, that can be very it's good, good information to know uh, when you're looking at a panel like this because people get really concerned about some of their favorite foods and if they show up never being able to have them again and that's not, that's not the piece here. So this is 96 foods. Um, it is done via a blood spot. It can be done um, in office or the kit can actually be mailed to you and if you're okay with pricking your own finger you can prick your own finger at home and send it to the lab and then I get the results. So you see this patient's highly reactive to dairy. Um, you can see her fruits are actually, she's got a few fruits that are high. Again, this is why I feel like this test is very valuable, valuable because we might not think to eliminate some of the foods that tend to be non-reactive. How would we how would we know that you know cranberry or lemon is a reactive food for her? That's why it's really great to couple this kind of test with other um, types of food challenges. She's having a, a, a big problem here with egg. Uh, she's okay with some of the fish and the crustaceans. Um, here's some of the, the good part, the, the yummy part of the panel, which is the miscellaneous. You can see, you know, coffee and chocolate and honey and sugar and yeast and see how any of those foods are reactive for you. Um, we come down here a little bit lower and you can see we have a grains, legumes, nuts, and we have the vegetable section. And again, you know, most people wouldn't think about any vegetable being problematic, 
but it's quite possible and you can see cabbage and mushroom not really working for this person at least for right now almonds which we consider you know pretty low allergenic type food and often replace lots of other foods with almonds you know like dairy with almond milk and um, gluten with almond flour as you can see clearly for this person almonds are, are just simply not working you know, we really don't want to see any foods over a zero. Foods should not be interacting with the immune system, um, from, in my opinion. I think that um, when you see a lot of foods, like this patient has quite a few foods that are over a zero, you have to step back a minute and say, why are all these foods crossing over in the gut? Why is the gut permeable enough that these foods are reacting with the immune system? And really, that, that should not happen. And you've got to go back and look at digestive function. And that's where, you know, true healing happens when you can um, find the cause. And when you look at a panel like this, you can clearly see some of the causative issues might not be just about the foods, but it's about how she is processing the foods, breaking down the foods, because clearly too many foods are showing up as reactive for her. Um, so an ideal panel when I run something like this, I like to see three or four foods that show up as reactive. All the other ones are zero and we can eliminate those foods for a period of time and the person gets better and it becomes symptom free. And then we can challenge those foods again down the road and see how somebody reacts. Um, clearly this is not the perfect panel in that she has way too many foods that we need to deal with. So we have to look a little bit deeper with this particular patient. But I think this is a valuable panel and um, I hope you agree with me and have learned a little bit today. Um, let me know if you have any questions.